Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're talking about Hawaii Esports Invitational top notch teams converge at HPU. With me is Ed Lallier, co founder and chief corporate development officer at Banta Esports. Welcome, Ed. Thank you. Aloha. Good to be here. All right. So tell us about Vanta Esports. Sure. So Vanta is an esports infrastructure company. We really focus on youth development, primarily within the K through you know, 12 space, but we are leaning into the college and the adult space as well. We provide competition, coaching, professional development, camps, free to compete leagues for schools, platform that's COPPA compliant. That's so we can, it's uber safe for minors under 13 as well as events. All right, so what got you into esports and developing uh, your company? Yeah, it's a great story. So I've been a gamer since, you know, like the 90s during the Quake days. Um, but, you know, and I was in finance, uh, financial services for about 20 years, um, but didn't really get into the esports business until my son, unfortunately, got cyber bullied early COVID. Um, and, you know, he's playing online with his friends and he, an adult came in and really terrorized a group. And it was a really traumatic time. Um, gaming was that, that connection point for normalcy to have that severed was truly traumatic, uh, and really felt the pains of isolation. Um, and I felt compelled to do something about it. So you can't really tell I'm six, seven, I played international basketball. My dad played pro, like I coached youth basketball. That traditional sports model works so well, where I have an adult mentor in the room with a structured program. You have practices, competitions during the week. And what you end up having is this skill development process over a, a, you know, a number of days or weeks. But you know, it's not just learning the, the game, but it's the life skills, the soft skills, respect, empathy, communication, uh, and such, leadership. This is what's being missed in esports. There is no adult in the room. There is no referee, no umpires. And as such, it's anything goes. And so I felt, like I said, compelled to do something about it. So I the first call was my my buddy and colleague from uh, Boston College during our MBA days. And I was like, I got an idea. Why couldn't we replicate that traditional sports model in the digital arena? And so we tested it out, did a number of alpha beta tests, and it worked out great to have a coach in a structured program where you're teaching the kids how to play the game, but also how to work together as a team. Um, and we started out as a coach league. And then from there, it blossoms into this full on infrastructure company that, like I said, lists out all these things from like coaching, the PD, the platform, the events, all of it though, is to provide infrastructure to support that coached league element at the core of it. It's basically trying to create a safe place for kids to learn, you know, with mentorship, you know, really trying to drive, you know, positive digital citizenship. And what led you to do this in Hawaii? Oh, that's a really interesting question. So I, I married up, I married an island girl, so I have two kids. And so she's from here. Uh, she you know, went to Iolani, our family went to Iolani. Both my kids go to Iolani. So I apologize for anyone who is listening to this, like, you know, go Raiders. But in any case, um, we chose a, a why for a number of reasons. One, when you're starting up a company, you need family support. My wife's family has is very broad here and that was really critical. The other thing to also think about was business sense. Uh, and there's a, a few reasons why Hawaii is really great. Number one, we were accepted into the Blue Startups Accelerator Program. For those who don't know it, it is a top 20 accelerator in the United States. It's funded by Tetris, which is actually based here in Hawaii. Tetris is a OG gaming. They're like, everyone loves Tetris. If we're going to learn how to make a business model work, we want to be mentored by them. So we went and so they only accept like eight applicants out of like 520. So we were really blessed to be part of that. So we went to Hawaii to be part of that accelerated program, which is really a school for startups. And they really helped us build out our, 
our business model, refine it, get the network, you know, connect with investors and such. That's great. But strategically, Hawaii is amazing because we have a monopoly on the midpoint between mainland and Asia. And if you know the esports industry, 56% of the esports market is in Asia. That has a motley, Hawaii has a lot of influence from there. We could actually start building a, a, a community where Hawaii is that gateway between East and West. Um, and so we're, and I won't go too deep into that. So strategically, it was great. Um, you know, for us, for our business, just to get started, amazing. But also the community here, it is a great place for R&D. I got a million people here who are tech savvy, very diverse, and I can actually utilize Hawaii and the community here as a way to test things out. And whatever works, I can then apply it and scale it in the mainland. So I looked at Hawaii as a really great focus group for my business, and it's worked out tremendously. Fantastic. And there's been a recent event that's really exciting. Let's show the video. Here we are with Jordan Oliver, director at HPU Esports. And what are we doing today, Jordan? So we are out here at the Zippies Hawaii Esports Invitational. Uh, we have schools, high schools from all across the islands, uh, mainly Oahu today, uh, duking it out for Valorant competition. Uh, we had an all-star show match earlier where we had high school students from around uh, actually getting mixed teams with uh, varsity students from Michigan State. Stony Brook and New York, uh, UH Manoa and HPU. All right. So Ed, you let why don't you expand on your event? Sure. Um, I think it might be good just to like start off as to why we had the event in the first place. Sure. And so I think you know everyone likes a good like you know you know the the etymology of the of of, of, uh, of a a really impactful event. So. The story goes as this. So I reached out to Kevin Yim, who's the vice president of marketing over at Zippies. Uh, he by end is a gamer himself. He loves Civ 6. And, you know, we connected on gaming. And really, my responsibility at Vanta is really partnerships and sponsorships, really building community connection for a greater purpose. Gaming is beyond just gaming. It fundamentally has more to offer for kids to adults. It's a really culture. Um, and... Kevin knew this. And so, in fact, Kevin had a special background. He actually was one of the uh, founders of the Diamond Head Classic basketball tournament that we all you know, are familiar with. So he has, and he was working at Hawaiian Airlines at the time. So he has experience of creating really marquee events that are really impactful in the, in the, you know, the community here in Hawaii. He wanted to do something like that now that he's at Zippy's. And he wanted to do something that was very original, unique, and he did that. And he wanted to do it through esports. <clears throat> he knows all the data shows that it's the fastest growing sport, and you can definitely see that here in Hawaii as well. Um, and he wanted to be first. Zippy's wanted to be first in Hawaii to really create that marquee event. And that, and so then the question here is, well, what is a marquee event in esports? And what you've got currently now in esports in Hawaii are a number of scholastic events for middle school and high school, which we're very proud to have the largest uh, you know, um, community. In Hawaii, we run the largest league, and we have our fall and our spring finals. Um, but that's elementary, middle, and high school, right? But for colleges, there really isn't anything here. And also for adults, there really isn't anything like on a standalone. It, it may actually be um, combined and co-located with uh, an anime conference or a music festival or something, but on its own two legs, there really isn't anything available for the community. And so I look at the community and so does Zippies as something broader than just K through 12. And so when we were looking at a marquee event, you know, our vision together was let's bring the entire esports community here, but let's also put a little spin on it Let's add a little flair. Let's bring some top tier teams from mainland to come here versus us traveling to the mainland to compete. Let's reverse the situation and have them come here. Who would not want to play video games in Hawaii? Like, let's go. And so it was received so well with everybody that I talked to on the mainland and here. And so we started out to create a product that really highlighted a few things. Number one, it's got to promote Hawaii culture, the benefits. 
you know, and you know, all the things that are special and unique about the culture, we want that to shine. Number two, this has to be inclusive. Therefore, we need to include all age groups here. And so there's a, you know, a special way in, in to do that. Number three, we needed to have really good competition. So we decided, let's actually do what, uh, a few things. Number one, let's do a college competition with really top tier teams. We were very lucky to get Michigan State, a top tier team, Stony Brook, an up and coming top tier team to challenge UH and HBU. And this was our pilot year, right? So we have a college competition, that's great. Why are colleges coming here? They wanna compete, but they also wanna connect to the community. And we were very fortunate to have a already established middle school and high school community. So why don't we co-locate an event there so we can utilize an, a, like a competition event really as a recruiting event. Let's get these kids scholarships. So that's a different spin on it. In addition, let's use this event as an employment opportunity. So you could get jobs. Zippies is now becoming more and more like automated and electronic. They have an, an app, you know, and you're seeing other food and beverage uh, organizations doing the same thing. Technical skills are necessary. Who better to recruit to than kids who love tech? And so they want to use gaming as a place to promote their brand for job opportunities. So we look at that. Oh, we're not done yet. What about the adults? Yeah, the kids are having fun, but what about the adults? So we created an open tournament where you know people can come in and participate in such a really great celebration. So you got colleges, you got like K through 12, I got adults. It was a really special moment. And Zippies was there to really you know make it happen. And so I, you know, they were really happy with the feedback. The, the audience was really thrilled. But that's the story. We wanted to create something that was really unique and different, where people were actually coming to us versus us going to them. And we could really support like everybody in esports on its own versus like sharing with some, you know, ancillary event. So hopefully that makes sense. It does. And let's start with the photos so people can see this event. Let's start with the HPU. So um, this is the location, right? Yes, it's the uh, Hawaii Pacific University Esports Arena, which is at Aloha Tower. Really great uh, facility. Really great facility. Okay, let's th scroll scroll through and and uh, and that was one of your sponsors. Aloha yeah, Aloha School. Pacific Federal Credit Union. Um, you know, there are schools to financial sponsor. They're offering scholarships to uh, for kids and for families. So it was really special to have them there. This is uh, Mobile IT Force. They they provide tech to schools, um, and they also have a you know, D2C component. Uh, but you know they're really uh, also a provider of Lenovo Legion products, and so they were very gracious to provide the hardware for our main stage. They also have a really good booth where it's interactive. This is PC Gamers. They create what they call the battle station which is looks like a table, but it folds out into an actual gaming station with a monitor, keyboard, PC. Um, it is a unique item that you'll never find anywhere else, but here in Hawaii, so we're really lucky to have them. So uh, definitely a really cool uh, company that's based here in Hawaii that's connected to esports. This is the main arena uh, for the collegiate uh, championship, as well as um, the high school as well. Uh, so you're seeing a couple of the shoutcasters uh, from uh, Esports U. Uh, they are a professional production company that does shoutcasting, live production streaming. They're actually based here in Hawaii, which is really cool. Um, and um, and they got great aloha. Uh, this is this is me speaking to the crowd. And you are giving away um, some gift cards. Is that right? Yeah, we were very fortunate to have uh, Rising to offer some of the uh, the many competitors from across the many different game titles that were there. So Zippy's offered a number of um, gift cards um, to really celebrate, you know, uh, you know, gaming uh, with a with a quality meal over at Zippy's. So yeah, that was pretty fun. Fantastic. Next photo. Yeah, this is the. Um, the other arena, so where we had it set up, we had a couple different places where you can game. So this one was in the main 
uh, area just as you enter into the uh, uh, the esports arena at HPU. And so you'll, you're seeing some of the, um, the, the college kids. Yep, That's and so here's another uh, version of that where you can see a main stage kind of looks like um, an L. And then you have the projector screen on the back, which um, is actually showcasing some of the uh, other activations in the uh, other room. We were very fortunate to have we a custom trophy created for both the winners of the college championship and the high school. Um, we, uh, courtesy to use Surfboards Hawaii, uh, we used reclaimed surfboards. And then we had a local artist, Jeannie Chesser, create this beautiful piece. And we did it uh, on two surfboards. And so what you're seeing here is the image of these custom surfboards, which has been deemed the surfboard. Um, that is the trophy that was, um, was you know, uh, awarded to the winners. I bet they enjoyed taking that back to- Oh uh, yes, they did, shrink wrapped and all. <laughs> <laughs> I should ask you who won the tournament. Michigan State won okay. uh, the college tournament and Castle High School won the high school tournament. So this is what I think is going to happen is Michigan State brings back that amazing trophy and then all the other colleges want to come to Hawaii because they want to win a surfboard, right? I think that's exactly what's going on. In fact, I just received an image of their surfboard in their trophy case at their brand new esports arena in Michigan State. It looks amazing. And the uh, the first thing that the coach says, like, this needs a this doesn't look good on its own. It needs a second one. So he's definitely <laughs> eager to come back and like get another. So these are collector items for certain. Absolutely. Um, so this. It, it sounds like you're very optimistic about esports in Hawaii. Is that right? Oh, very optimistic. And just in esports in general across the U.S. and globally, but especially here in Hawaii. What do you think the future holds for esports in Hawaii and esports across the country? Yeah, a lot of different things. So, uh, number one, um, you're going to be seeing stronger business models for sustainable organizations. Um, historically, you're seeing business models where it's really just sponsorship focused heavy, and they don't have any revenues to support that when marketing budgets are reduced. So what you're seeing are companies who are able to survive on multiple revenue streams, and that's going to give some continuity to a, an esports industry that really wants support. And it takes funding to support these events and all the training and stuff. So that's going to be super important. And that's what gets me excited is that Right. We're all very smart now on how to actually run an esports organization. That allows us to have more infrastructure. And then to support that, you need to training. So we're seeing a lot more people learning, getting certifications, getting degrees in esports. You're, you're seeing that at UH. It's going to be really exciting, you know, in the next few years, just how many people are actually knowledgeable about this space. And that turns into a lot of other things. They can get jobs. Um, they can actually create jobs. Um, so businesses and stuff, which is really exciting. There's going to be more events and activations here to celebrate. Therefore, with all this content, all these things, it's going to be becoming more and more mainstream. And I think that's what's really exciting is that we're filling the gaps. And that's in the infrastructure with education and training, jobs, um, and business. So Zippy's got involved. Do you think that other companies will see that Zippies embraces esports and they might jump on the bandwagon. Yes, I think I think without a doubt. Um, you know, here locally, um having having this kind of marquee event with a notable name here, um, it definitely resonated. And I'm definitely getting more interesting conversations now about hey, where can I get involved? Um, and definitely on the mainland too. Uh, we actually run the largest Scholastic Esports event in the United States in Texas uh, at the Esports Stadium Arlington. It's uh, 100,000 square feet. I mean, you got McDonald's as a sponsor. We got uh, Takis. We've got Smoothie King. I mean, uh, really big names. And what's exciting is like we're building that here in Hawaii. No one can touch it because like there's only one Hawaii. So I think what's really cool is now that Zippy's has taken the lead, 
Uh, we're seeing like Hawaiian Telecom get involved, Low Pacific Federal Credit Union. There's, you know, Coca-Cola is, you know, is, you know, getting involved. We're seeing other bigger names wanting to get involved because they see the value that it's actually producing, you know, in the community. You know, it's really hard to reach young people in terms of marketing. And I think that this is where they are. Is that right? Yes. I mean, if you're looking at uh, the demographic of uh, age 18 and under, 90% of kids under 18 are gaming. This is where they're at. And so I think it's really important to, when we're trying to connect them, you know, to connect to them, you know, you want to do it in a very authentic and meaningful way that's not shady. Um, and so you do that through these uh, esports activations. Um, you can tell your story. And Zippy's did a fantastic job of really highlighting their understanding of the space. And then connecting what they do best, food and community, you know, into the experience. And I think more and more brands are taking wind of that. You know, I see a big advantage for Zippies because they're not only trying to sell their food, but they're also trying to staff. And and where do you find restaurant workers, you know, young people and yeah. So I see that 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 it, they have a strategic advantage there to get their brand out for a number of reasons to that um, that audience. Yeah, I mean, so I'm hearing that there's kiosks now for self service, so like, so you don't have to go to the the cashier. You could actually order um, from a kiosk in the building, or you can go through the app. Um, you know, and in fact, I, I've heard some stories that there may be a robot. Like, you know, actually rolling around, helping with cleaning the dishes or something. I mean, they're, it's becoming more and more of a thing. And that it takes you know, technical skills to operate and supervise and monitor uh, the type of technology applications that are being used uh, within the food service industry. As we know, they have tight margins. So we're using technology to actually help with profits and also provide better service. And so you're going to, you know, you're, you're adding significant value when you have those technology applications and features uh, in their sort of uh, sort of their service model, and you know, gaming man, yeah, these these kids know how to operate machines like they have to because it's, especially if you want to be at a, a top performer, you're gonna have to be very tech savvy. So, um, and they get very hungry when they work really hard. So it just kind of makes sense. <laughs> Let's work it. So what are what are future um, events? For Vanta, um, what do you have coming up? Oh yeah, so we got quite a bit. So, um, so you know, for us, we're a national organization, but here in Hawaii, we've got our upcoming spring finals coming up. Uh, you know, at HPU on uh, April 27th to 28th will be a two-day event. We've got over 80 schools participating. I got over 1,600 kids. You know, K through 12. It's going to be amazing. We're now in like five different islands, so we're really using gaming as the uh, connector. You know, and it's going to be a celebration once again of the top teams in both middle school and high school. So that's on the 27th, 28th of April. Please come by, uh, free admission. Um, and so uh, that that's going to be exciting. We're looking to do a fall finals in early December. Um, that will be um, you know around the yeah you know, the first you know the second week of December, and then we're looking at you know early spring of 2025 uh, for the next Hawaii Esports Invitation. So as a parent who embraces esports, do you encounter parents that have questions about whether their children should be gaming or have or push back on this? Yeah, I mean, I get it a lot. And I think, you know, given that they know that my reason for starting this company was because my kid got cyberbullied, they understand the idea of structure, supervision. And it's very hard for families who are really struggling just to like make ends meet, try, doing a lot of things. They use gaming as that babysitter for all intent, for you know, lack of a, like a better term. So the kids get occupied, they're, they're in the house, they're safe. But the problem here is that they're technically not safe. You go online, there's nobody really supervising them. So when they're coming to me like, Ed, what can we do? Because they know that pulling the plug from the machine doesn't actually solve the issue because you plug it back in the back end. Just, and so they're looking for program and education. So they like the idea, the concept of a coached program that has an adult 
um, that you know gets the kids together, form teamwork, build like you know the, the kind of you know uh, basic fundamental skills of just being a good citizen. They love that idea, um, and they love the fact that they know exactly when practices are, when the competition is. They know the rules. Um, they love the fact that it's not gaming for eight straight hours. It's like an hour and a half practice, and you're done, just like anywhere. They love the fact they don't have to commute the kids to some other place and like spend money on gas. So there's a lot of conveniences that they see when you can apply it in a very meaningful and thoughtful way. So uh, pe people really resonate with a response to that. So it really becomes a, a question about, you know, finding enough time for that structured program. So do you think that esports will take the place of traditional sports in the future or how do you think um, that will play out in terms of um, the future generations? Uh, you know, traditional sports aren't going away. This is just one more additional sport that can be uh, can be part of that conversation. Um, you know, you know, there's definitely a, you know a a need to get out there outside, get on the field, on the court, and you know play whatever the sport is. But I, you also see there's a lot of people who may not be. Uh, very talented at slam dunking a basketball because they're not six seven, you know, or pass blocking, but they're very talented in gaming. And so, you know, you see, you know, you're now giving an additional choice to an audience that really didn't have a place to to be. And so, you know, we oftentimes very surprising over fifty percent of people who participate in our esports program. And this is also another one. I've never joined an esports team. I'm sorry, a, a sports team or a club at their school. Over 50% of the, you know, those who participate have never done anything else. So this is an underserved community. And what I see in the future is just more places for these underserved um, players and, and students, you know, to, uh, to participate and to, you know, find a home. All right. And let's uh, talk about your website and where people can find you. Sure. So, you know, you can find us at www.vanta.gg. Um, and on that website, you'll have a number of different options. You can uh, join our free school leagues. Um, we actually have over um, 31 game titles you know, to choose from, so that's pretty cool. Um, we also have camps. We have coaching, private coaching for individuals, or if you want to do something team-based. And if you're an adult, you want to get some learning, we do some professional development. Um, and then you can see our schedule for a lot of the events that we do. Fantastic. Well, Ed, thank you so much for um, being here today. And we've learned a lot. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you, all of you today. Mahalo. All right. Thank you uh, to our viewers for joining us. See you in two weeks. Aloha.